It's race day at Donington Park for round two of the Sidecar World Championship. The parkland setting of Donington provides the perfect environment for round two of the FIM Sidecar World Championship. It's a welcome return to a circuit that last staged a round of a competition back in 2008 when Pekka Piverinta came out on top. This year's pole sitters are Tim Reeves and Gregory Clues, who survived a wet-dry qualifying session to take top spot ahead of championship leaders, the Virtual Brothers, in second. A mixed grid here in Donington as national trophy riders join as non-championship wildcards for this much-anticipated race. Yeah, a win would be great. You know, I'm sure that there's not only me wanting a win today, um, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. We're limited dry setup time due to the weather, as typical English weather, but I feel good. We've got good data from last year, so we'll see. We'll certainly be trying as hardest. Hopefully we can carry on our uh, run of good fortune and we need to drag back a few point, points on Ben and Tom from Aragon. So hopefully, yeah, we'll be pushing for the win. I think you're going to find, now it's dry, you'll have a good race because all these front two rows, there's five of us, and then you've got your coming from behind. I think you're going to get a six-way battle. I think you'll be in for a good race. Two of the top three in the championship sit on the front row with wild cards in the mix as well. It's lights out on the British Grand Prix here in Donington. Another poor start from the Birchill brothers in the centre of the grid. Reeves and Clues getting away well. Three abreast down into Redgate. The number four of Peach and Richardson on the inside. The Birchill brothers sandwiched across the front of the 77 of Reeves and Clues. And Steinhausen and Kolsch have moved up well in the early stages as well. Four places they've progressed from the start. Sitting in sixth through the Craner curves. Reeves and Clues out in front. The Birchill brothers back in second. And a big move there up the inside. The 32 of Hegarty and Neve into the old hairpin. Lovelock and Alto, the victims there, they slip back. So no major changes up front. The top three complete the early stages in grid order. Just as Tim Reeves predicted before the race, the top six all running nose to tail. Down towards the S's, Steinhausen and Kolsch now separated by three wild cards from the race podium. Move for seventh here, Rocha and Burkhard picking off Archer and Smithies. And Chaplow and Hawes on the 73, Kawasaki coming through there as well. Headline news on the opening lap, Hock and Becker down in 10th after getting away poorly from the grid. Reeves and Clues lead it then by four tenths of a second from the Birchill brothers. The number four of Peach and Richardson slipping one and a half seconds back from the early pace setters. Hockenbecker on the move, got a good run out of the hairpin, got around the outside there, down into Redgate. Makula and Asu Manimi working their way through as well. That was for 10th position. The Brits on the LCR Suzuki going backwards behind them. Steady flow of the machines through the curves, and that's a bit of a disaster there for the 66. Rocher and Burkhard running wide from 7th place. Lost a couple of positions there in the end. Hockenbecker coming around the outside of the old hairpin for 8th. Further up the order, meanwhile, a good start to the race for Steinhausen and Kolsch. They've done well to start to pick their way through the field, but it's Tim Reeve, 2006 British Grand Prix winner, who leads here in Donington. He's twice changed passenger since then. Gregory Clues, his current choice of co-pilot, and this duo is working well under pressure from the Birchills in second. Down the order, clearly a problem for that 66 machine I was talking about earlier. They've slipped another place back behind the 99 of Makula and Asu Manini, and a lunge into the S's there from the 32 of horsepower and favour. That's for 12th place. Plenty of action right the way down through the field. And a gap of over six seconds has opened up between sixth and seventh places. The front runners leading all together now in a pack streaming back down the wheat cross straight. And the gap between those leaders closes by one thousandth of a second last lap around. Reeves and Clues still in front. Hegarty and Neve getting up the inside down into Redgate. And that's another position change as Peach and Richardson go backwards. Good tussle going on down the order as well. 55, 56, and the eight of Stroyer and Kurtz trying to go up the inside of the pair of them. Almost three abreast down into Redgate. In the end, Stroyer and Kurtz having to back out of the move. You just don't want to be losing machine parts on uh, only the third lap. But it demonstrates that you've really got to keep your wits about you here in Donington. Passes coming all around the circuit. And the top six separated by just four seconds. The top two just edging away now with a two-second lead. Here they are within striking distance of one another. The number 77 of Reeves and Clues in front down the straight towards the S's with the 16 of Tim and Tom Birchill chasing. 
and Peach and Richardson further back involved in their own tussle. Onto the Wheatcroft straight once again. The gap visibly as close as it's been all race. The Birchill sniffing their prey now. Reeves and Clues just a couple of tenths in front. Third position outfits Hegarty and Neve trailing now by three seconds. Here's the battle for eighth. Makula and Asumanimi moving steadily onto the back of Chaplow and Hawes. Five national trophy outfits ahead of this finished duo. None of them doing themselves any disservice at all on a track that, of course, these British riders know well. Kershaw and Wilson, one such pairing. They now occupy 10th as the pack just begins to spread out a little. The gap from first to sixth now at over five seconds. Still Reeves and Clues leading the way, but they've got to watch out down the longer straights. The Birchill brothers, six kilometers an hour faster than them through the speed traps on the last lap. And again, they seem to be closing down towards the S's. Not close enough this time. And that's another change of position further down the order. Must have been out of shot somewhere earlier in the lap. Steinhausen and Kolsch have moved into fourth. Now after closing right up onto the back of Reeves and Clues, the Birchill brothers did slip a couple of tenths back last lap around, but there's still nothing in it now. And it's Hegarty and Neve, the outfit on the move, closing almost three tenths on the race leaders there. Asuma Nimi has managed to get by Chaplow and Hawes to finish lap four in ninth. Meanwhile, Remps and Biggs dropping out of the race last lap. They've been running 17th, and in that dogfight where we saw several outfits involved out at the back, Chaplow and Hawes have managed to get past Makula and Asumanimi once again. So these squabbles are changing from bend to bend as more great action here in Donington Park. A personal best last time around for Hegarty and Neva, 135.8. The Birchall brothers still sniffing around as up front it's a new fastest lap of the race from Steinhausen and Kolsch after making their own pass. They're the fastest of anyone by three tenths of a second and a change of position. A change as the Birchall brothers managed to get up the inside through Coppice. That's not a normal overtaking position. So they must have got the run off McLean's absolutely superbly because they simply drove past without much need for a toe. And a change of the race leader. It's been threatened throughout, but only now on lap six do the Birchall brothers manage to get by. Steinhausen and Kolsch, incidentally, the closest to the leaders that they've been all race, so we might well have a three-way tussle for the lead pretty soon. Three tenths in arrears and pushing hard the German outfit. Down that uh, Shelley Smithies, I think, from the number 70 Suzuki. Never a good sign when a passenger's separated from a machine and sitting in the middle of the track. Out of the race from uh, down in uh, 13th. That looks like the left-hander of the Fogarty S's. Yes, it is. They've just missed the apex of the bend, taken to the escape route to have another go. And what exactly happened here? Well, Archer's basically spun his passenger off the back of the machine. No such trouble, meanwhile, out in front for the Birchall brothers. Finally out of the immediate danger zone. Reeves and Clues three-tenths slower than the Birchall brothers last lap, leaving them half a second back now. And the big news in terms of the championship is that Steinhausen and Kolsch have appeared with a 50-second first sector on the last lap. They must have had an off-track excursion out of shot, and that's going to leave them around about 30 seconds back. What a shame for them. They've been homing in on the leaders, so my suggestion that we were going to have a three-horse race for the lead might not be correct now. There they were, down in eighth position, only just ahead of Gherkin Wesselberger on the number 18 BMW. So some real dramas for Steinhausen and Kolsch, who drop back from the leaders and out of contention, and bad news for their championship battle as well. Up in front, meanwhile, the... Lead two now separated by over a second for the first time in the race. And the Birchill brothers, you can see, are kicking on. A new fastest lap of the race last time around. A 134.8, a full seven tenths faster than their previous best. And Hegarty and Neve have managed to lose almost one and a half seconds on each of the last couple of laps. And they're now just under four seconds back in third position. Here they are negotiating their way back down into Redgate. A reminder of the state of play then. The Birchall brothers hold a one-second lead over Reeves and Clues. Following their spin, Steinhausen and Kolsch have now recovered to seventh, aided by a mechanical retirement for the number four of Peach and Richardson. The closest riders to the two leaders are the wildcards. Hegarty and Neve, some five seconds back. And the number 14 of Lovelock and Alto, who've had a pretty quiet race, really. They hold fourth. Then it's Hock, Makula, Steinhausen, Gurks, Horsepal and Rutz to round out the top ten. Thank you.
The main story being Steinhausen and Kolsch being so far down the order after an off-track excursion in the opening sector just a couple of laps back. They have started to make that recovery now. Another fastest lap of the race there for the Birchill brothers, a 1.34.7. A personal best from Reeves and Clues as well, a 1.35 dead, but that's just not enough at the moment for them to keep up the pace with the leaders. And now the next challenge for the Birchills, they need to try and safely negotiate all of the traffic whilst maintaining this gap. A couple of outfits already a lap down, but another two still set to be in the path of this duo. They're just coming up here on the number 88 of Nicol and Connell, who occupy 13th. Impressive speed for the Birchill brothers to already be chasing after the back markers. They're going to come down on them into Redgate without losing too much ground. Nicol and Connell there riding totally offline. Good news for the chasers because Reeves and Clues got to completely threw up the inside with their back markers getting out of the way without too much hassle. Race definitely back on out in front. The gap has closed slightly. Reeves and Clues gaining half a second on the last lap. Just sit seven tenths in arrears Birchill's undoubtedly looking good but can they take what would be a stunning ninth win in succession the 66 of Russia and Burkhard the next obstacle for the Birchill brothers all the while Reeves and Clues starting to line them up third place outfit Hegarty and Neve also starting to make their way through lap traffic now here they are coming up the inside sit over seven seconds back from the leaders uh, we are starting to develop a two-horse race here in Donington. Nonetheless, in the trophy class, they're set to scoop the honours. Wildcard points, of course, not counting towards the World Championship today. Down into Melbourne. Reeves and Clues have made a sudden lunge. They were a distance back, and that came from absolutely nowhere. The Birchill square off the turn and try to run it back into the final hairpin. But it's Reeves and Clues who'll have the inside line. And after six laps of following, Reeves and Clues have managed to get back past. The Birchill brothers going straight to the outside. They're going to look for a run around the outside line. But it's clamped down well by Reeves and Clues who head back into Redgate as the race leaders once again. The Birchill brothers undeniably haven't given up, but they just got it wrong going into Melbourne, went in for a wider line, and Reeves and Clues pounce straight up the inside. Beautifully done. Through the Craner curves, Reeves and Clues ran a touch wide there. That's going to compromise their entry here into the hairpin, but this is a fast-flowing section with no braking zone big enough to really make a move. This the only chance into the S's. The Birchill brothers lining back up into the slipstream, but Reeves and Clues have it covered. The Birchills regroup for an attack into Melbourne. Down the inside this time, and they almost touch. Reeves and Clues tried to cover it off, but the Birchill brothers were already there, and they're side by side once again, heading into the final hairpin on the circuit. But Reeves and Clues still have the inside line and are able to maintain the lead with some brilliant defensive riding. On to Wheatcroft for the 13th time. The Birchills have got to pick their place carefully here. They can't end up in contact. It would be extremely damaging for the championship, and it got close again into turn number one but the Birchills have to settle for second place behind Reeves and Clues you'd expect it to keep getting close as the fans are treated to an excellent race in the sidecars here in Donington 2012 world champion Tim Reeves versus 2013 world champion Ben Birchill back down into Melbourne then Reeves and Clues still under pressure they went defensive early straight into the inside line and that's going to give the Birchills the run off the turn here they've got the power down nice and early trying to run onto the back of Reeves and Clues Reeves just looking at his passenger there teamwork at its best and it's the Anglo-French combination that still holds sway great record for Tim Reeves in the British Grand Prix the 41 year old from Kent twice a runner-up twice a winner in the last 10 years his race lead still under threat though from the Birchills tighter there through Redgate no real way through in the early sectors of the lap here in Donington. Long flowing series of twists and turns before the circuit's lowest point. You can see the riders dipping down now towards the old hairpin. This sector all about putting yourself into the right position because it's on the climb on the other side of the circuit here that passing manoeuvres can really be made. Steinhausen and Kosh now pretty lonely down in sixth. We'd almost forgotten about them, but closing by about a second a lap on Hock and Becker in fifth place. Vital position for them because uh, Hock and Becker currently sit third in the World Championship with two wild cards ahead of them. Just look at how close that got back down into the S's once again. The battle ahead of them on the track is for eighth position in the race. So these two are going to be difficult to pick off as back markers because those positions are worth valuable championship points. 
all of the action on the circuit, placing extra pressure on Reeves and Clues to try and pass each outfit very, very carefully when putting a lap on them, because any slight mistake and uh, the Birchall brothers might be able to get through. Went for a big old wide line around the hairpin there to try and get the longest possible run down Wheatcroft and into Redgate, but Reeves and Clues take the inside line and will make their way past Stroyer and Kurtz pretty easily. No route through there for the Birchalls, and the backmarkers came back across the racing line right in front of the Birchalls. They're going to lose time hand over fist through this first sector, and the 77, you can see, have taken advantage to ease ahead. How quickly can the Birchalls close up? That'll be a measure as to uh, how much faster they are than Reeves and Clues out in front. It does seem that the fastest outfit on the circuit is still the Birchall brothers. This is about the most breathing room that Reeves and Clues have had for an absolute age. The Birchalls must have lost a good few tenths through that first sector. And if they can avoid letting the LCR Suzuki back into their slipstreams, the Kawasaki duo might just have this. Three laps to go. Three runs into Redgate, into the S's, into Melbourne. The best overtaking opportunities on this beautiful Donington Park circuit. And time is undeniably running out now for the Birchills. Back onto the Wheatcroft straight once again. The gap narrowing ever so slightly. Tim Reeves just taking a look over his shoulder to check on his opposition. No doubt about that. He wants to know exactly how close the Birchills are. You can see his lines changing as he switches to the inside defensively when the Birchills are right on his tail and takes a wider entry when he has a slightly bigger advantage. Reeves and Clues three tenths faster over that last lap. All three tenths gained as the Birchills picked off back markers in the first sector. Six tenths the gap as they came over the line. It's a lot shorter than that now. A race that has gone both ways at times today is starting to go back the way of the number 77 machine. Only seven bikes now still on the lead lap. Steinhausen and Kolsch just 1.2 seconds in arrears of Hock and Becker down the order for fifth. And the two British wildcards, Hegarty and Neve, Lovelock and Alto, almost forgotten, isolated down in third and fourth. It's close again, heading back down into Melbourne. The Birchall brothers still not quite close enough to make a move coming out of the turn, though. Interesting the way they snap across coming out of that bend to try and get their wheels in line far, far earlier. Isn't working for them at the moment, though because uh, Reeves and Clues are able to hold down the inside line well. A look over the shoulder there from Tim Reeve as his outfit crosses the line with two to go. Ben and Tom Burchill with 40 podiums and 16 race wins already to their name. Chase Reeves and Clues for the 2014 British Grand Prix. Around the outside of Gurk and Weschelberger for the 77 machine. And the Birchills tried to go the other way up the inside. There was no room through there. And again, the back markers favour the front runners in Donington. Very often, the back markers end up playing into the chasing riders' hands, but not so here. Meanwhile, the almost forgotten story of Lovelock and Alto in fourth, one place away from a podium, but 14 seconds back from Higgerty and Neve in third. Hock and Becker, 13 seconds further back behind them with Steinhausen and Koch now buzzing on their rear. That'll be an interesting battle in terms of the championship, but it's a lonely race for most of the riders now. The field having spread out massively since the start. The Birchills never before on the podium in an FIM British Grand Prix looks certain to do so today, but will it be on top spot? Just two tenths of a second, the gap between the lead outfits. The smallest the gap's been since lap 13. The Birchills, the heavyweights through the speed traps, then get menacing in the final turns when there are some big breaking points. And once again, right onto the back, although they've just had a bit of a power slide there out of the final hairpin. That's going to cost them a little bit of time. Heading into the final lap with three main overtaking opportunities left to come for the Birchills. The first down through Redgate. They couldn't make it through there. The 77 covering off the inside line well. Now the Suzuki riders need to slot into line, follow closely through the twists and turns of the opening sectors. Back through these classic parkland bends for the final time in this race. And it is still the 77 who lead it. 
next chance for a big move will be along this straight. The riders look for a good run out of Coppice, duck into the slipstream of the rider ahead of them, negotiate the elevation change that you can see there on the circuit, and aim to outbreak their rival into the Fogarty S's. Doesn't look, though, like the Birchills are close enough here. The 77 went defensive anyway. That might compromise their exit through the S's. And sure enough, the Birchills managed to get around the outside. They're totally level coming into Melbourne. Can they manage to get around the outside for the final time? No, they can't. Reeves and Clues block the line. They haven't blocked the exit, though. And the Birchills are going to try and pull it back with just one hairpin to go. It's all down to the wire. The first team out of the final hairpin for the final time. It's Reeves and Clues. The 77 take the win in the British Grand Prix. And the Birchills were super close at the finish. You can travel all around the world but rarely will you see a more closely fought motor race than that one. Reeves and Clues led from pole, but that only tells half the story of a breathless 19 laps with the Birchills twice fighting their way past before some smart defensive riding in the latter stages from Tim Reeves saw his outfit first to the flag. What a brilliant ride from both of the outfits involved. A final winning margin of less than a tenth of a second shows just how close this race was. Plenty of battling down the order as well, and importantly for the championship, Steinhausen and Kolsch picked off Hock and Becker for fifth on the final lap, giving them third among the world championship regulars. Yeah, the first couple of laps I felt really confident for us for the race because uh, I could close the gap to the first four, and um, I was looking forward to the next laps, but then uh, Redgate, uh, we lost the bike, ended up in the gravel pit and had to start from eight again. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with uh, third place today, yeah. I wanted to win it, really, but, <laughs> yeah, you know, we've had a good run so far and Tim drove a fair race and there's nothing in it between us and, you know, he, he crossed the line first and he's the winner, but points make prizes and that's what we're about. We're, we're looking for that championship, so we're still leading that, which I'm, we're thrilled about. And we have a big job to do next week and next couple of weeks in the Isle of Man TT and then straight to Croatia, so we'll see what we can do there. Yeah, it was a great, great race. We have a good fight, clear, and yeah, we managed to finish first, so we are, we are back for the championship. It's going to be a long season, but I want to say, to say a big thanks to all, all, our, all, all our sponsors. Thanks to their victory in Donington Park, Reeves and Clues moved to within four points of the Birchall brothers at the top of the championship. Only one position change in the title race, with Steinhausen and Coles dropping to third. But it's a memorable return to the top for Tim Reeves and Gregory Clues after a third place finish in Aragon. The only question that remains is whether the final rounds of the season will see the Birchall brothers hold on to their title lead.